Chip Chip Gruners, my name's Donato. Welcome to my channel. And in today's vlog, I'll be talking about reducing the risk of injuries. Cue me drinking some tea. Yes, 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 Gruners, welcome, welcome today on Tuesday. Apparently it's Transformation Tuesday on social media. And so I'm gonna talk about how we can all work together as a group in terms of reducing the risks of injuries. But before I go on to that topic, I just wanna say a big thank you to all the guys who left some amazing comments on uh, yesterday's vlog about being uh, motivation, inspiration. So I've got the screen in front of me and I'll be looking through some of the comments, but. I've been getting a, uh, we've got a bit of a Canadian theme going here, yes. So tomorrow here in the UK, as I was saying yesterday in Welsh, which was um, Sut Mate with Hedu, which is what's the weather like today? And uh, lots of people left comments on what's the weather like today. So in the UK, uh, later today, apparently there's a bit of a uh, snow arriving. And uh, I always tend to see on social media, it's a bit of a chuckle, how um, snowflakes bring the city of London to a standstill. That's right, the, uh, apparently it's the financial capital of the world and a few snowflakes brings it to a complete standstill. So following on from my Canadian theme, that uh, I did get a comment from a new subscriber who's over in Alberta, Canada. So I had a chap who uh, left a comment who was in Northern Ontario, um, which is another one of the states in uh, Canada. And uh, he mentioned that he was out in the running minus 22, 23 degrees Celsius. And uh, our man in Alberta was saying that uh, it was only minus 16 Celsius. Yes, a subtropical minus 16 compared to Northern Ontario. But with the wind chill, it was a minus 24 Celsius. And uh, 60 mile hour, 60 kilometer, 60 kilometer winds gust into 100 kilometer headwinds. Yes. so. For those of us in the UK and Europe, I mean, I do feel for those out in Canada, but here's a little challenge for all, all my subscribers out in Canada. Um, I've had comments now from obviously uh, Ontario. Welcome and, to uh, week one okay. of the Q. And uh, oh, as I'm flicking through, oh, I'm getting all mixed up here in terms of where, where my screens are, yes. <laughs> in the comments. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for the comments and the things that uh, do motivate you but my little challenge out to my uh, Canadian subscribers all people from around the world if you know someone in Canada um, I don't know if you know all the states in uh, Canada but here's a little challenge can the running guru show reach out to people across all the states in Canada and it's it's a big big country yeah so I'll go through some of the uh, states that uh, are there I mean we all know the main ones across the border with the US but there's others up in the northern area. So um, I'll go through in terms of uh, order that uh, I've used with the help of Dr. Google in terms of all the states in Canada. And can this channel reach out to all those states? And if you are from any of those states in the Canada, leave the comments below in terms of where you are. And for those of you in the rest of the world, please don't feel left out. You feel free to leave the comments of where you are in the world as well. But this is my little Canadian challenge as I'm here with my Toronto Maple Leafs topic. Again, I know, I know. It's two days in a row I've had this. Mm -mm. Anyway, so here's some of the uh, states that we need to reach out. There's Nanavut, Quebec, Northwest Territories, Ontario, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Yukon, Newfoundland and Labrador, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. Yes, can we reach out to all 13 of those states in Canada? There's my challenge to you guys. Are you up for the challenge? Message anyone you know in the world and uh, get the word out of the Running Guru channel. And if you are new here, I'd really appreciate a subscription, like, thumbs up, and uh, as is custom here on our channel, here, leave some positive comments below of what, uh, what you think of uh, this particular channel. But uh, I need a quick sip. Oh, mmm. So, World Marathon Majors, yeah? We're coming up to um, Tokyo Marathon on uh, March the 3rd. 
And uh, I did touch on, whilst there's some amazing information out there on the uh, social media planet um, with regards to uh, running, I, I do believe there's a lot of misinformation out there. And yesterday's misinformation <laughs> award, um, but again, I, I just put it out there. And uh, I basically uh, come across something on Fastbook. And uh, for those of you who do use uh, Fastbook, sorry, Facebook, um, which sometimes can be a bit of a farce. Um, there's there's all sorts of groups out there that are there to help um, runners and so on and so forth. But I saw something that's sort of using my common sense. And if you are new to the channel, um, please bear with, bear with. And uh, if you've been watching this for a while, you'll understand that uh, when it comes to running marathons, um, I'm, I've mentioned many, many times that people hitting the wall or glycogen levels being depleted. And it's, uh, it is it is proven that those who go out too fast at the beginning of a marathon are more than, more than likely to hit the wall more than uh, those who go out slow and steady and slowly build up. So when I come across this uh, soothsayer on one of these uh, fast books um, groups, and, uh, and I don't want to mis misquote uh, the guy, I'll just read it as it is here, you know. So he says, and I'll, and I'll put that, um, hopefully I'll display it on there, that I did take a screenshot. Um, if you are running the Tokyo Marathon on March the 3rd and are worried about missing the cutoffs or being swept, send me your expected pace for the first 15 kilometers and I will work out a strategy for you to avoid being swept. Now I'll stop there. For those of you who don't understand, there's um, certain races, there's a sweeper at the back and Tokyo is one of those marathons that has a sweeper. Some other marathons don't have sweepers and you can finish, I guess, within a reasonable time of 10 hours or whatever. Um, but other marathons have sweepers. I think the Berlin Marathon, uh, I, I, sorry, Tokyo Marathon, I don't know what time that sweeper is, but um, if you get caught, you have to then step off the road and walk the rest of the way on the footpath or finish it that way. I don't even, I believe, I don't even think you qualify for a medal if the sweepers passed you because everyone would have, by the time you've got there, everyone's packed and gone home and there's nobody giving out medals. But correct me if I'm wrong, as I say, I'm new to all this. Leave some comments below if Tokyo Marathon still gives out medals for those who the sweeper is caught up with. So I'll continue here. So this chap then says, I have a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, yeah, that can be used to work out the optimal strategy. I can send you a copy of the spreadsheet and help work out a strategy for you. I estimate that if you're in the lost last corral, you will take at least 30 minutes to reach the start line. And for those of you in, in marathon majors, there's various corrals. And the last corral is the corral at the very back and it's predicted finish time. So it's normally based on speed that people are racing. So you have the fast guys at the front and the slower people at the back. So um, he's predicting here it would take at least 30 minutes to reach the start line. So from when the gun goes off and the fast people go off, people in the back around takes about half an hour to get through um, from the start. So at that point, you'll need to be able to run the first 10 kilometers at 13 minute mile or eight minutes per kilometer to avoid being swept. So if you are not able to do this, then tell me your expected pace and I will help you work out a strategy. For anyone in this situation, the primary strategy, and this is where my alarm bells went, the primary strategy is to get from your corral to the start line as quick as you can and get through the first 15 kilometers as fast as you can. It becomes easier later on. Right, um, I say I don't want to sound uh, overly critical, but for anyone who runs the first 15 kilometers, irrespective of what your fitness level, everyone runs it at different paces, but if you run the first 15 kilometers as fast as you can, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's guaranteed to happen? So I put, I took a snapshot of this and put it out on social media. So if you do follow me on social media and, uh, and I asked people, can anyone explain what kind of spreadsheet this would be? Because, this just does not sound right. And, uh, and I love to stand corrected, you know, by this guy. What, what's this magic strategy where you're at the last corral, you've now sprinted the first 15 kilometers because he does say, quote unquote, you get through the first 15 kilometers as fast as you can. So when someone tells me to run as fast as you can, I will sprint. Yeah, you will sprint as well. That's the instructions. So somehow his magic spreadsheet will... Uh, and it, the fact that it says it will become easier later on does question, highly question what uh, the tactics are. 
So, um, <laughs> shall I go through some of the comments I had back on the social media? Um, uh, basically, it was along the lines of if you can't run quick enough, um, do another race, yeah. But I did get one where it was a spreadsheet and someone typed in the spreadsheet format in Excel run quicker than the sweeper or do another race. There you go, that was the strategy. Thank you, Ant, for that. <laughs> made me chuckle. So, um, yes, please, people, be, be aware, be aware. Now, thankfully, all you guys who do watch this. Um, I get the impression that you've all got a good bit of common sense and uh, are very knowledgeable and understandable what, what goes on. So if someone's ever telling you to run as fast as you can in a full marathon, a full marathon, as fast as you can at the beginning of a race, I do highly question what the tactics are. But obviously he's asking for people's emails and so on. So I then begun to wonder what, what what's he doing with people's email addresses and so on and so forth. But that's a whole continued debate. You're all here to understand how to reduce risks regarding injuries, yeah? Is that right? So I need to have a quick sip of my tea before I uh, get into that. Thank you so much for still being here. So yes, injury risk prevention. If I just quickly say what, there are two key reasons why uh, injuries are caused. And the two key reasons are is one, and, and these are all based on our levels of fitness. We're, we're all different, so, but it's two generic key things. We either run too fast for our current level of fitness, so we're doing a particular training session and we're going too fast for that session and uh, we injure ourselves doing that. And the other one is running too far. Again, too far for our own particular level of fitness and distance. And that's why I often talk about on these training plans, certainly for beginners, if it says to go out and run 15, 20 miles, and um, depending on the level of fitness and how we run and our running form, that may be too far. And that's why sometimes time on our feet is more important. So if we're running too far for our particular level of fitness, when we're running certain distances, we do tend to fatigue. And when we fatigue, we lose our form. And it's when we're losing our form, that's when injuries uh, or the higher risk of getting injuries do come in. Ooh. Let me check, I think I bumped the uh, microphone again. I wanna check that the uh, sound hasn't disappeared. No, I don't think it's disappeared. So those are the two key reasons that cause injuries. And uh, and sometimes when we, uh, and I think the third one, but it sort of comes in with those two, is overtraining, where we overtrain and then we become tired and fatigued. And then obviously when we become fatigued again, we lose our form and then that comes to injuries and so on. So whilst there's two main reasons, running too fast and running too far, the third one is quite important where we're overtraining and we're overdoing it. And unfortunately, when we overtrain, there's many signs that indicators. And I did get some comments. Um, let me find the comments that I had um, from various people that were talking about. Um, so there was Sarah who uh, said she's got a bit of flu and uh, wanted to hear something. Sometimes you need a reality check. Yeah, we all need reality check, Sarah. I'm, I'm the same. Certainly as a beginner, I really did need uh, some reality checks. And there's a lot of people out there who've caught bugs, who are becoming ill. And that's sometimes the first sign that, um, and we can get fatigued for all sorts of reasons. It's not just the running, you know. And um, for a lot of us, myself included, we're not professional athletes, so we have day jobs, we have families, we have children, we have mortgages to pay, we have all sorts of things that's going on in life, and life itself can fatigue us, not just the running and the training. And if you recall, I think, yeah, it was last week, um, I knew I was out for an all day as part of my work, so I cut back on the training run um, for that particular morning, because I knew I'd be out all day. And as Cole quickly picked up um, when he saw that day, I did film it and I was out and about for lots of meetings, seeing lots of people. Um, I think that day I covered 35,000 steps. So uh, really that was that was predominantly just walking. I think I've just done a little six or seven K um, in the morning. And uh, as opposed to my usual uh, distances. So I cut it back quite a lot. And I was half tempted not, not to do the run itself. I thought all that walking would have been plenty. So we need to look at the whole holistic thing. Oh, I keep banging this. Uh, let's, let's check again. And yes, we're still there. Can you still hear me? So we look at the whole thing. We need to look at the whole thing to help reduce the risk of injuries. What is our daily schedule? What's, what 
what's involved you know if you have a job where you're on your feet all day and I recall interviewing a guy who's part of the 100 marathon club and one of the key questions I asked him is where do you fit because remember I was a beginner and I still regard myself as a beginner so I asked him the question your he runs marathons every weekend every weekend yeah sometimes he'll do four marathons in four days so Friday Sa Friday Saturday Sunday Monday over these bank holidays yeah so I'm asking where do you fit in the training now his day job is up on his feet and it's a very physical job he's got himself to a certain level of fitness now he says he hardly does anything he just goes out for a, for a run a couple of times a week in the midweek and then does the marathons yeah does, does that make sense now he's doing these marathons every weekend and he's not getting injured um you might have seen steve edwards phenomenal guy he's been i think he's coming up to 900 or he's doing the go for the world record a thousand marathons he does say he's blessed that he hasn't had injuries he's running marathons i think he's averaging three hours 15 three hours 20 somewhere around there for all his marathons he's obviously doing something right and we we live and learn don't we yeah sarah Andy, I know Andy, Andy Forrester Dean Runner's not been feeling too well. We all get bugs. I mean, it was around March last year where I picked up a really bad bug. And basically, that was a combination of um, I was working away quite a lot, having to do be on my feet quite a lot, distances at walking to get to and from uh, offices and, and the training as well. And I think I've just overdone it. And, and I was doing some pool train, swimming pool training as well. And there was a bug going around in the office and I just picked it up because when you overtrain, our resistance in terms of keeping bugs away goes down. We lose that resistance. So it's important that we keep our energy levels up to try and fight off these bugs and germs that go about and, uh, and they get passed about from, from all sorts of people. So hopefully this has been informative in some way to you guys. If it has, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. So it's just a bit of information, knowledge that I've gleaned. And, uh, and as I say, hopefully it has helped you in some way and found it informative. And if it has been informative, maybe you'd like to share this amongst your friends and family on the social media and in real life. And that would be, that would really make my day. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the time that you take to come and watch me on my channel here on The Running Guru Show and it's daily show number 62. So thank you all so much. And uh, maybe we'll have a bit of a theme going through of um, as I'm wearing a Welsh Buffy, I might talk more about it tomorrow. But uh, as the blizzards are arriving here in uh, in the UK, maybe one uh, one of my subscribers sent me a, a a short video of the snow blizzard arriving in. Uh, I think they're in Ontario in Canada, and uh, that looked like proper snow blizzard. Yeah. So thank you so much for sending me that. And uh, yeah, so wherever you are, whatever you do, stay safe, keep warm. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will help you reduce the risks of getting injuries. And I'll see you tomorrow. So please do keep up the positivity. And tomorrow, Wednesday, I oh, I'm completely forgot. You see, I don't have scripts or anything. Tomorrow, Wednesday, in UK time, it'll be evening time around 8, 8.30 p.m. Uh, GMT. So set your clocks or wherever you are in the world. And um, we'll be having a special live show with some very special, special guests. Tech allowing it all works. And if we can pull this off, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a YouTube first, as far as I know. If it isn't, I don't really care. We're going to have great fun. <laughs> so... Thank you all so much for uh, taking the time to uh, watch this. I, I better wind up, close up now. Yeah, am I done? Yeah. Please do leave some positive comments below. I love your feedback on all the uh, points that I've raised here. So let's go. Enjoy your day on this Transformation Tuesday. Bye. Yeah.